The Father serves as a core of reality since he is the ground of being. The I am. Yahweh then acts, then moves and thinks. He creates Logos and the Spirit from these actions. They're part of God, they come from him, yet a thought cannot be incomplete, nor can his action. They have to be God. There's no essential distinction between the thought and the mind that generates it. There's a distinction in hypostasis, or manifestation, but to separate them is to fall into the eternal nominalist error. Affects are never sui generis, nor is there meaning. Individuals make no sense unless seen as hypostases, or standing under the broader idea in the system. So, but when you reject nominalism, the social consequences end up being the doctrine of royal and patriarchal life. And paganism has to be democratic and material. Um, if you read Ovid and the stories of the gods show a democratic equality and independence from one another, and Logos doesn't have a will of its own. Only natures have wills. It serves the hypostasis of thought through the Father and thus has to be God. But paganism from Babylonia to Rome is chaos. Each entity, is pantheon, reflects the minds of who first wrote the poems and stories. Social life is anarchy, and only occasionally forced into shape by the transitory nature of superior force. But for the church, force doesn't make any sense. The ground of the relations are ontological. Nominalism only knows force, since force is the only thing that brings sensibles under one roof. All roofs, so to speak, are artificial and transitory. In the modern world, force is all that exists. So to grasp someone like Isaac Newton, you have to grasp the error of nominalism in the first place. The father is the ground of existence, the alpha and omega of all relationships. The father on earth is the king and patriarch. He's the ground of all familial relationships. The anomalous metaphysics that is adopted through political revolution, the father loses all purpose. Anarchy remains. But an anarchy that serves to invite the oligarchy to impose its own sense of hierarchy. One hierarchy is no better than another, and no moral distinctions can be made if meaning is not to be found among sensibles as such. The visible world exists solely through light. His presence is another way of speaking of this light, the power and grace that holds the cosmos together as a singular thing. But mental freedom is derived from this understanding. Um, but the study of Logos is known in part by the study of the complexity of the natural laws as they manifest themselves in everything everything from biochemistry to, to physics. Logos in himself, outside of the church and its revelation, is another matter, though. The fact that the world of matter is law-bound is something assumed by modern science, but the origins, purpose, and end of such law is beyond their abilities, beyond what it's capable of doing in it on its own. So say those who try to peer into the divine darkness are those often without spiritual preparation. One of the most important assumptions or axioms of the modern idea is the view of ancient medieval science. The medieval science is derived directly from the science of Rome, itself is based on the Greek. The assumption of the Enlightenment is historic. Science per se only existed in the modern world. The Middle Ages were a time of superstition. Natural laws were not known in this era. People died allegedly at 30 in the Middle Ages. Our longevity derives directly from the new sciences developed as a result of the Enlightenment. Those who criticize modern science, those who are criticizing from a rightist point of view, were smeared as appearances. But it's based on a series of myths anyway. It's a rewriting of history in, in, in a weak sense. It posits um, really ignorant, sick people liberated by the developing scientific method in Britain, the Netherlands, and France. This method was self-generating, desirous only of finding the truth in the midst of superstition. So truth, science, and reason are defined in modernity precisely as that which derives only from this method. It finds its end in the development of technology. The conclusion, though, that the Western world is far more rational today than it was a thousand years ago, that it must be far happier and healthier than it was a thousand years ago. But this approach bears very little resemblance to actual history. The main distinction between medieval and modern science is that the latter has its final purpose, the development of technological apparatus. Greek and Roman science generally did not have machines as their end. The question, therefore, becomes how to explain ancient science. The Enlightenment approach claims that there was no science at all in the ancient world, and hence, no science in the medieval world. The latter is merely an outgrowth of Roman ideas. The reality that the ancients developed powerful empires, centralized bureaucracies, mathematics, uh, geometry, aesthetics, and astronomical precision and sophistication. Ancient medical science had a population living at roughly 70 years. And the claim that the scientific world was, the ancient world's unscientific, that the cathedral of Reims was built by ignorant uh, craftsmen is to engage in just intellectual dishonesty. 
precision of the ancient pyramids is alone equal to the most sophisticated building equipment of the 21st century, but no one denies that ancient science was very different from its modern inheritors. The difference lies in its product. Empirical and logical methods of inquiry were well developed in Egypt, Athens, Rome, and medieval Ireland. The Renaissance didn't resurrect Greek and Roman learning, nor did the Enlightenment recreate the nature of science and reason. Natural science existed in its empirical modes in the Roman Empire, and the literature of Greece and Rome were the daily fare of medieval intellectuals. The concept of enlightenment is thus an occult concept. What was resurrected is not the empirical method of Roman poetry, but rather the ancient Babylonian occult science of alchemy. This makes 